Hey, runners, have you ever wondered how to improve and not lose your power as you get older? Today, I'm excited to have a guest, Eric Lahane, a physical therapist who will explain his 30-second rule to add power to your runs. Welcome to the Forever Runner podcast. I'm your host, Herb the Forever Runner. I'm a heart attack survivor, ultra runner, and longevity coach for runners over 50. Listen in each week as we discover how to master your running and enjoy an active lifestyle as you age. To learn more, head to foreverrunner.com for show notes and to subscribe to my weekly newsletter. Welcome, Eric. Glad to have you on the podcast. Like we were talking before, I, I saw this very interesting article on Medium called The 32nd Rule for Seniors. And... After going through that article, I just uh, said, God, I got to talk to this guy and share what he has to say, because I think you're, I think you're really on to something. So why don't you go ahead and start off and let us know what is this and why did you bring this up, come up with uh, all this? Sure. Thank you so much for having me on, Herb. I really appreciate it. And yes, I'm more than happy. I guess the, the best place to start is, as you mentioned, I am a physical therapist and probably about seven years into my career, I was with a, an older woman. She was probably in her mid seventies and she had experienced the fall. And so she was coming to this outpatient clinic I was working at. And of course, we were going to work on her balance and stability and strength and all the prevention type of markers we could really hone in on to prevent future falls. And this lady was something else. She could leg press 300 pounds. She had incredible mobility. It, was, it just seemed like it was a freak accident that she fell that, that caused her fall. Yeah. And so I worked for about 10 visits. And on the 10th visit, I was going to do a discharge. Again, she was flourishing. She was an all-star across the board in terms of for all of her physical attributes. After 10 visits, I said, oh, she's ready to be discharged. And so I, I put her through these different types of tests. And again, she was just blowing them all away, no problem. And the final test for her was, I thought it was a given. Her name, I, I'll say her name was Betty. And I said, Betty, I just want you to lie down on the floor, prone on your stomach. I want you to roll over and stand back up. Piece of cake for this lady. I was already marking it off as a discharge. She rolls over, she gets up on her knee, she props one leg up, she could not get up. I said, oh. I thought she was joking at first. I was like, come on, Betty, come on. And, and I said, let's start over. I was like, you must be nervous or something. So we started over, same thing. She rolled over, propped herself up, got one leg, stand up. She could not get off the ground. And again, for these 10 previous visits, this lady was knocking everything out of the ballpark I threw at her, and I was stunned. But this was the moment. It was an epiphany for me. She had strength. She had mobility. She had stability. She had balance. She had endurance, but she could not produce power. She could not produce power. In order to get up off the floor, that's a, a necessity. You must produce power being force times acceleration. Betty did not have any power. And this was my aha moment. And from that day forward, I started to research further and further. And what I uncovered is starting at as early as our third decade of life, in our 30s, we have muscle fibers. In general, we have two types. We have slow twitch, which is more of the aerobic-based muscle fiber, and we have fast twitch which is you can think of as those explosive power producing fibers. And as I stated, as early as 30, we can start to lose these fast twitch muscle fibers at an alarming rate if we do not specifically train them. And over the years, Betty, this client I just spoke of, she was playing tennis, she was golfing, she was going to the weight room. I mean, she was doing yoga. She was doing everything except except power-based type of exercises. And this is when I really started to learn that so many active seniors do not have the ability to produce power anymore. 
And again, this all relates to that fact I stated that in our third decade of life, if we do not really specifically train fast twitch muscle fibers, we lose them and it compounds over the decades and decades. And when you hit your seventies, if you do not have an ample amount of these fast twitch muscle fibers, we start to see falls. We start to see accidents such as even to the point of where people have an accident, they have a fracture, they never can recover from that type of injury. And a lot of this has to do again to the inability to produce power. So from that day forward, I started to really introduce power-based exercises to a lot of my clients, and it has made a world of difference with across the board with so many people. And I know what a lot of people are thinking at this point that even in their later years, a lot of times we'll point, let's age, we're getting older. That's part of aging. Of, of course, we're not going to be able to do what we did in our thirties and twenties. And I readily agree with that. We can train at an older year and really isolate these power-based types of movement training and do it in a safe manner. Also, I think that scares a lot of people away when I tell them, well, you're 75, you're 80, you're 85. You can still train for power exercises at that age in a safe manner. Yeah, Long story short, this is where the 30 second rule stems from. Own story. I think it was Dr. Peter Atia. Yes. Other than disease, falls are the biggest uh, to older people. And that, that comes directly from what you're talking about. You, like you said, the ability to be prone on the floor and be able to get up by yourself it is an extremely good test for seeing where you're at right now. But yeah, preventing falls is huge for us, for us older people. No doubt about it. Absolutely. And even if you think about the mechanism of a fall, interestingly, if, if you look at falling in general, younger people, and I'm, I'm speaking of people in their twenties and thirties lose their balance more than older folks do. However, they do not fall nearly as much as older people. The reason being is when you lose your balance, balance, it's that response. It's that millisecond response that you have to have in order to catch and right yourself. That is a fast twitch muscle fiber response. Again, a power-based response that we need in order to prevent a fall. And again, as we get older, we lose these fibers. So if you watch an older person, they trip, they do not have that response, that fast twitch response in order to get that foot out and stabilize themselves. And that's why they're going down. So in that regard too, preventative wise, it can be so important. Like you stated, Dr. Atia has mentioned this many times that once you fall, most people will never have the quality of life they once had. Many people within a, a six month to year period, even it's, it's fatal. They, they do not recover to the point where they pass away. Again, this fast twitch response is so important in so many different categories. And the, the 30 second rule, what, what I came up with here is if you take any exercise and you put a time limit muscle fiber to respond, it will fatigue in less than 30 seconds. And, and a great way of thinking of this is if I asked you to go out and sprint, how long would you be able to keep your top speed up for? Probably way, not very long, maybe 10, even an Olympic caliber athlete, Usain Bull with the hundred meter, hundred meters in the Olympics. The reason why he is so successful is not his top speed. The other runners are also at that top speed that he can get to. It's he's able to sustain that top speed longer than the other runners. And that's what makes him so successful. That 10 seconds, that 11 seconds, probably less for him. He's running that or 10 seconds. So probably eight seconds, he's able to maintain that top speed. But that is where the 30-second rule stems from. 
these fast twitch mu muscle fibers, again, very powerful, but they fatigue very quickly also. And so if you can sustain an exercise for over 30 seconds, you are not isolating the fast twitch muscle fibers. You have gone into to the type one, to the slow twitch fibers. So that's why I tell people to really get a good read on how you're exercising. And if it is in fact a power-based exercise, you should not be able to sustain it for over 30 seconds. It's just a general rule, but it gives you a lot of feedback instantly about where you're at and what type of fiber that you're really isolating. So what would be some examples of things people could do that meet this 30 second rule? Yes. I always start with, of course, safety first, especially with this age group. We cannot tolerate an injury at this age group. It's a process. I would not tell someone go out and start sprinting. If someone came up to me, 72 years old and said, I'm ready to start sprinting. No way. Most people have not sprinted in years, if not decades at our, at, at that age group. So it's a process. You have to build tissue tolerance first. You have to prepare your body before you jump right into an exercise, like a 30 second rule. But you can modify these also, depending on your current fitness level, you can easily modify this. I just made a video recently, a great exercise to start is called the get up and go. And again, if I always like to say this also, if, if you have pain or you have any medical contraindications to exercise, do not attempt any of these exercises I'm about to explain. But if you are pain-free, then you can certainly start this at your own pace. It's all relative to where your fitness level is currently. So the get up and go, very simple. You lie down prone on the floor on your stomach. You get to your feet as quickly as you can. You run in place as fast as you can for five seconds. As fast as you can, you get back on the ground prone again. You get back up, five seconds, run as fast as you can in place, back down prone. Try that for 30 seconds. Again, the intensity is going to change depending on where you are relative to your fitness level. But the idea is to do as many repetitions as you can within that 30 seconds, and then you know you are really isolating those fast twitch muscle fibers. Well, yeah, it might take me 30 seconds to get up on the floor. <laughs> I laugh, but you're right. There are, and that's fine. I tell people that's fine. If that's what it takes to get up off the floor, that's fine to get it. If these can all be modified to where you are currently. If you can get up and down and do two, two sets of that, get up five seconds, or maybe it's a long, maybe it takes, like you said, 10 seconds to get up five seconds run in place hard, that's fine. But the, your goal should be to start to increase how many reps you can do within that 30 second time period. And again, that's a, a, just a nice general rule. You're honing in on those fast twitch muscle fibers. Now, for, you know, for, for the runners, one of the, one of the, uh, Common ways to approach this, you might say, would be through HIT, HIT training, H-I-T right. training. Is that applicable to what you're saying? I, I think in a certain way it is. The only, the only, I guess you could say drawback is that the intensity is really crucial. So if you're doing multiple sets of this, there's the law of diminishing returns that Maybe by your third interval, your intensity is going to be depleted to the point where you're not able to sustain the necessary means of really hitting those, those fast twitch muscle fibers. So what I tell people is usually if you're going to follow the 30 second rule, I tell people just start with two sets, do two sets, three times a week. And then from there we can build. But I've run into that with other people. They've told me 10 sets of the get up and go exercise I just described. And by their fifth round, their energy is depleted. So they're not, their intensity level drops. 
and then they're not going to isolate those fast twitch fibers. So it's definitely the quality over quantity with this type of training. And that's really a, a, a benefit of it also that it really does not take much to engage these type of fibers and to sustain them as we get older and older. Even if you did that get up and go, like I said, two sets, three times a week, the probability of you maintaining fast twitch muscle fibers will be greatly increased as you get older and older. Just by being very diligent and consistent with an exercise like that, again, two sets three times a week can make a huge difference. So again, it's not the, the quantity that you want to, it's the intensity, it's the quality of each interval that you're doing. That's great. Yeah. So if you, if you can't yeah, do each interval with the same amount of effort it starts to drop, then that's the cue to exactly done. you're done. There's no exactly. need to do any more because you're not doing yourself. You're not any, hitting. Yeah. And you can gauge that by how many reps you're doing within that 30 seconds. So if the first set you did five reps and then the second set, it's seven reps. And then the third set it's, or, or I'm sorry, the second set it's, yeah, it's seven reps and it starts to deplete, then the intensity has dropped and it's not going to be nearly as effective. I think it's great too for seniors because as our activity increases, we are more susceptible to break down an injury also. Yes. So with these, 30, these small 30 second intervals of training, the rate or the susceptibility to injury drastically decreases, which is Again, as a senior, we do not want to get injured and be laid up for four or six weeks. That can really put us in a difficult position. So in that regard, I think it's very effective too. I really, one, one thing I liked in your article is you gave uh, some examples for just if you're like around the house doing things. I know one, one thing that I talk about is what we call micro workouts where you might have certain cues around the house where when I walk through this door, I have a chin-up bar there. I love it. Or, I love it. Or, or if every time I walk past this lamp, I pick it up straight. There's always these little cues and micro workouts you can do during the day. But but you mentioned that you had a couple examples uh, in your article I thought were interesting. Yeah, you're right. Just... In your daily activities, you can get so much accomplished in terms of exercises. I tell people, I get a lot of people and they're at a point where even getting out of a chair can start to be a struggle for them. I said, make that into your exercise. Every time you get out of the chair, do five repetitions of it. Every time you go to the kitchen counter, you can back up and, and do 10 push-ups off the counter. Like you said, just placing objects. I even have people who they'll brush their teeth and they'll stand on one foot, a single leg balancing exercise on one leg. Or if you go shopping, it, 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 you may get some strange looks, but when you're going down the aisle, you can do a set of lunges. You can do a lunge walk, went up and down the aisle. So it's all there for us. We just have to be a little bit creative with the way we approach our activities. But absolutely, you can get a, a great workout in just with your daily activities. Yeah, I think it's so important as we get older to maintain that, that muscle mass and keep that strength and the in the power. Yeah. Uh, on top of that. And oh. I, I think what we're talking about or what we're conveying is there's no excuse not to do this. You don't have to be a member of the gym. You don't have to have special equipment at home, dumbbells, kettlebells or any barbells, anything like that. Even if you have nothing, you can still put together a strength and a power session that that will build and maintain your muscle mass and strength and power as you get older. I, I completely agree. I think controlling our own body weight, I've had so many people I've evaluated and they tell me they can um, leg press a certain weight or they can bench press a certain weight. And then I have them try to do a push-up a, a push, and they cannot do a push-up because they are not able to stabilize and then produce the power required to lift their own body weight. 
with a squat. I asked, again, someone will tell me they can leg press 250 pounds. And I said, let me see you do a squat. And they are not able to do a proper squat, proper mechanics, controlling their own body weight. So I, oh, I think you hit it right on the head. Or I always tell people before you ever pick up a, a, any piece of exercise equipment, you should be mechanically sound. You should be able to control your own body weight before you start to pick up a dumbbell or a barbell or B because you're setting yourself out, self up for failure. If you're working on external conditions where your body is not able to control your own weight, you're, you're looking towards an injury at that, at that stage. I completely agree with you. Your body weight is more than enough especially with power-based exercises. If I told someone to do 10 squat jumps, they're not going to last too long as opposed to doing, yeah, dumbbell squats. It's right. completely different. So absolutely, you do not need a gym membership. You do not need equipment. You can just need a little space in your bedroom, and that is more than enough. So this, yeah, this is great because I, I think a lot of seniors are we're getting the message and are, are getting active and yeah. you know, what they do, maybe they're, they're going for long walks. They're learning how to run or jog. They're playing golf, pickleball. I mean, they're getting out and moving and that's a great thing, but there, there's still another layer on top of that. And I think it's great that, that you're pushing this out there for everyone to see. Thank and you. and for us older runners, if you're missing that additional layer, it's really easy to add on to whatever we're already doing. So absolutely, yes, sir. Yes, yes. So, so this has been great chatting with you. So how do how do people get hold of you? They want to get yeah. into this some more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a website. It's called thegatewaygroup.com. And gate is G A I T. The yeah, gate. like the running gate. Hey, yeah, sir. Sure. Yeah. Or, yeah. or gate. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's the gatewaygroup.com. And I have a YouTube channel. You could also plug that in YouTube and you can see my videos. And as you stated, I'm on Medium. I write on Medium. Same thing, the gatewaygroup.com. And my articles will come up, my videos, and my website. But uh, thank, thank you so much for, for this evening. I really appreciate it. And I give you so much, I have so much respect and admiration for you also, which, which you've accomplished and overcome is, is mind boggling. Oh yeah. Thanks so much. Yes. Of course. We, we both need to, like I said before, we both need to get out there and spread the Kool-Aid as much as we can. That's, that's cool. Anyway, we can help each other out. That's great. So I'll, I'll go ahead and put links to all of Eric's stuff in the description below or the show notes. And yeah, for all of you out there, thanks. Thanks for watching and start planning your 30 second rule. See ya.